And you're welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. It's now time for our newspaper review segment we call Off the Press on The Breakfast. <coughs> and we've invited uh, public affairs analyst Ezekiel Nya Etuk to discuss this with us. Uh, good morning, sir. Thanks for joining us. Always a pleasure to be with you. Good Fantastic. to see you, sir. So let's begin with the Punch newspaper. The headline here is very disheartening, and it's about the abductions in Niger State. The abductors here are saying, quote, will starve schoolboys to death. If any of them dies, I'll tell you where to pick the cops, and that's according to a kidnapper. And uh, bandits reject 2.7 million Naira ransom, demand Niger vigilantes disbandment. Government agencies failed to remit 1 trillion naira, says Fiscal Responsibility Commission, FRC. Nigeria loses 151.78 billion naira crude oil monthly, says NNPC. Bawa defends graft allegation, gets Senate confirmation as EFCC chair. And we have here Professor Isesege saying, I'm afraid Malami won't let Bawa succeed. Akira Lulu takes a second term oath, insists on state police. And we see pictures here of that <coughs> ceremony. Bandits raid Kaduna, local governments, kill 19. Nigerian Air Force hits gunmen. Obiano in Anambra, no problem with U.S. immigration. That's according to an aide. Metsu recounts demonic prison experience, says he'll serve God. Loop-sided appointments affecting Nigeria's unity, PFN. NDLA arrests 90 people, seizes 614 kilograms of drugs in Lagos raids. And the last one here, elders intervene as Oyetola Aribashala's aides defer on ex-governor's comments. Ms. Ayed Chuk, it's a, it's a loaded front page here on the Punch newspaper and lots about security, especially the big story with the abduction of the Kagara boys. So it's a... Doctors now saying they'll starve to death. Yeah. I, um, it, it's very sad. I've always said this, and we will continue to run these commentaries until we sit down and understand what government is all about. We have so mixed governance with politics. And I'll tell you this, banditry, kidnapping, is a very, very, very lucrative political tool. Extremely lucrative on one hand. On the other hand, is a sort of business that you don't let go easily. I'll tell you the two arms as quickly as possible. On being a lucrative political tool, we run the sort of politics that is driven by money. So anybody that gets into government is looking for as much money as possible. Now, one of the easiest sources of money to government is security, security vote. For as long as there is peace, there is no need for security vote, which is the money you don't need to account for. So that's not really good. So there should be some level of instability so that there will be need for security vote, and this is money you don't need the Senate or you don't need your House of Assembly to give you appropriation. It's like, you know, we understand how these things work. So a level of insecurity is politically expedient. We need to understand that. That is a political system that we run. So we don't expect this to go with a wave of the hand. I remember very clearly when my brother Goswil Akwabio was the, the governor of Akwaibom State. And I was on radio, and I said certain things. As soon as I left the station, somebody called me with a blocked number and said, architect, you know we like you. Please don't be saying such a thing. I was surprised. I said, no, I'm saying the things in the interest of... He said, oh, that's it, uh, okay. You have what to eat. Leave it. What was I trying to do? I was trying to say things that could be done to ensure peace. And this guy is saying... If there is peace, we the boys won't eat. We need this level of, you know, confusion and insecurity for us to eat. And I was really startled. And I really couldn't believe that somebody thinks that way. But that is the truth about politics. 
They don't care about the people. It's not about the people. It's about their personal ambitions. Mr. That's Yeto, on one side. Mr. Yeto, I, I, no, wanted, to, I wanted to, I wanted, sorry for, for interrupting you. I wanted to bring bring us back to this particular issue here uh, regarding this Kagura abduction. Uh, just a minute. I the know. federal government, I wanted to put a question to you, please. The federal government has repeatedly denied offering ransom. Lai Mohammed said this just over the weekend. That what do you no want them to tell you? No, just a minute. Sister. He said no ransom was paid for any of the kidnapped or abducted children and that no money will be paid for this one. But here we have an audio message from the bandits delivered through Sheikh Gumi saying that they gave them or offered them a 2.7 million naira ransom, but they're rejecting it and instead we are asking for the vigilantes in Niger State to be disbanded. I mean, how do, you, how do you analyze that? You don't analyze it. It's just a blatant lie. You know, we play the ostrich in this country. Don't tell me that nothing is paid. Secondly, the second leg I wanted to tell you about the enterprise, okay, of kidnapping or what's going on. These are people whose only interest is money, getting money. They don't have any ideology. They don't have any philosophy. They don't have any allegiance to anything. It's how to get money. We need money, money, more money. That's all they, they, they understand. That's all they see. That's all they know. It's a criminal enterprise where you just do make cheap money. And for such people, reasoning does not come to bear. That's why they can tell you, we will starve school children. Imagine the heart that will tell you and look you in the eye and say, we will starve school children to death. Children, not adults. Children. Oh. And when they die, we'll tell you where to pick their body. Just try to interrogate the mindset of the person you are talking to. Right, There's certain things that you will not as much as dare to imagine. All right, I'm and these are the people you are telling me, oh, we are discussing, they don't need money. Please tell that to the Marines. I don't believe it. All right. Um, I'm sure, you know, sometime during the program today, we would, um, you know, extend the discussion on negotiating with bandits and, you know, ways that we can end kidnapping in Nigeria. But I, I want you to quickly move to another topic also on the punch there that says uh, uh, government agencies failed to remit one trillion naira, and that is uh, the FRC. Um, I want your thoughts on um, the possibility or the, the, the need to block leakages um, in government. We have continued to lose money as a country uh, because of, you know, failed systems that should checkmate these things. I'm sure that one trillion naira would have done, you know, absolutely well for infrastructure, for healthcare, maybe even in COVID-19. Um, what are your thoughts on the efforts by the Nigerian government to block these leakages and also to prosecute, um, you know, these um, um, issues? We have organized leakages in government because the people in power more often than not use these organized leakages to make the money. This money is one trillion. It's not going to one clerk somewhere. Check it out. It always goes to the top. And that's the very same top that you want to block the leakages. So they are going to do a lot of body language, a lot of um, you know, motion without movement. They are going to do that. We need to come to a point where people understand what government is the essence of governance. Until that time, look at what is below that as well. The crew that we are losing on, on, a, on a regular basis. My brother, what is so difficult about applying technology at the point where the oil is being extracted. It seems, it's just like water, putting meter in your house. They can tell the amount of water that is coming into your house and they give you a bill based on that. It's a simple technology. Right. Why can't we have that? And then that figure, that terminal is on the desk of Mr. President. So you know that every morning, Mr. President knows how much oil has been pumped. With that, you don't even think in terms of um, trying anything funny, which is what INEC is trying to do, send the results from the polling unit so you can't have people manipulating it along the way. All right, let's what move is to... so difficult in doing that? But we won't do it because we know the negotiations we do on the differentials. That's just as simple as okay. possible. Let's move to the nation uh, newspapers now. Let's see what we can also find there. There's um, obviously something on uh, security, once again. 
It says on the nation there, more killings by bandits, Boko Haram, in two states. That's a major story there. Also, we slashed duty on tractors and buses to curb inflation. EFCC to probe unexplained assets, says uh, Bauer, the new uh, chairman. Uh, Senate Claire's uh, the nominee, of course. Um, also on the nation, Minister, we don't know when vaccines will arrive as Ghana gets 600,000 doses of uh, COVID-19 vaccines. Uh, container load of tramadol intercepted at Apapa Port. Gunmen kill five policemen in Anambra Delta attacks. Also on the nation this morning, prove I'm a terrorist, Bauchi Governor tackles or Tom. And also AKT East uh, by election for the 20th of March. Um, of course, still talking security. 28 dead, scores injured and kidnapped. Zulum says terrorist new tactics are worrisome. All right. Um, I think we can start with um, the um, screening of Abdul Rashid Bawad, the new EFCC chair. What are your thoughts uh, quickly, sir? Um, uh, number one, I'm happy that a young man is um, being given a certain position of responsibility and I, if I were to have access to him I'll tell him think of your future don't think of the person or the people that sent you there they will deny you they don't care about you they think they can use you and if you are stupid you will listen to them but if you are wise you'll ask God for wisdom on how to operate you are just 40 in the next 10 years you'll just be 50 in the next 20 years, you have it to run. And the foundation you lay today is what they are going to run tomorrow. Thank them very well for them being used by God to put you there. But give your allegiance to the Constitution. Because if he makes the mistake of, you know, playing to the gallery and trying to, to be nice to the people that put him, these people don't care about him. They just saw him as a tool that disappoints them. Mm. Sir, thank you. Look at what happens between governors and when they are leading and their successors. A time comes when the successor says, thank you very much, but please, I am the governor now. I want to do the right thing. And there's always a fallout. So please be diplomatic enough to thank them for bringing you to the seat, but play your game. At the end of the day, whatever is the price, you'll be the one to pay. In 10 years, you are just 50. In 20 years, you are still in the service, which is what will make you 60. 20 years, lay a solid foundation. The foundation you lay today is everything. Let people know that a new sheriff is in town. All right, and of course, uh, there's also uh, the issues between the Bauchi State Governor and the Benue State Governor, uh, Bala Mohammed and you know, um, uh, Governor Tom of Benue State. Know, that issue, is not issued between two governors. It's about mindset that Nigerians should leave the people involved and interrogate the mindsets. But you see, we, we, are, we, are, we, we really don't want to take things intellectually. We just want the gist. Oh, they are quarreling. Oh, two governors. Why are two governors quarreling? And if you're a party man, I think that the chairman of PDP in the interest of the party, ought to have waded in long before now. We have people like President Jonathan, who is still a member of the PDP, apart from the party chairman. We have lots of respected and respectable elders, including um, 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 Obong Atiku. They are all in the party. And I think that it should be an embarrassment to them that two of their governors are having these prolonged you know, misunderstandings these things, the question is, what's the ideology of the party? It brings to fore. What's the position of PDP on kidnapping, on terrorism? The, the, every party is government. That's what I, I told them when I was the chairman of a party. You are either a government in action or a government in waiting. So there should be a policy position of the party that every party member must subscribe to. We need to reinvent, this, go um, back to party politics based on supremacy of party. Is where this every uh, evidence? Party, um, is this evidence, you know, uh, to support that narrative that political parties in Nigeria don't really have ideologies? There's no, str you know, strong ideology that backs 
um, political parties. They don't have. They don't have. That's why they swing from one party to the other. But I think this is a time where parties, we need a third leg. We need a party that comes with that concept of party supremacy, party ideology. And I'm happy that men and women of conscience are coming together under the National Consultative Front to give us this option. I pray that we move early enough and give Nigerians a credible option. Right. So you can either go with this APC PDP or you go with the new option. And I am looking forward to, to everybody jumping in to say, look, let's go the old way or let's go a new way. Let that be the divide between us in political parties going to 2023. All right. Okay, last year on the Nation newspaper, let's uh, talk COVID-19 vaccines now. Minister is saying we don't know when vaccines will arrive and Ghana gets 600,000 doses of the vaccine. If the health minister is saying this, I really don't know where we stand regarding vaccines because I really spoke to uh, Dr. Chikri Hekwazu, uh, NCDC DG yesterday, and he assured us that uh, vaccines would arrive by the end of the month. But we're getting a different response here from the Minister of Health. I, I, I find the Minister of Health sometimes honest and almost politically naive. A lot of our public officers say what is politically correct and not what is the honest truth. When you say something is coming at the end of the month, you have to tell me that you had concluded negotiations, you had made the necessary payment, there has been definite agreement, this is the timeline for the shipping, this is when it will arrive. It takes nothing for you to know that. But if, it has done, if you are hoping that we will conclude, you are hoping that this will, then don't give us timelines. Just let us know that we are still discussing and if all is well, it might be possible this time. Don't give us dates. And secondly, I want to align with Nigerians who are saying, let us think twice about facilities for healthcare and vaccines and the money we spend. Let's have interrogation on the money available, where it should be deployed, and how it should be deployed. This is the money of Nigerians. You don't just move it anyhow. I want to see the National Assembly really having a very robust discussion as to this matter, what is the best way out for Nigeria as a nation. We have limited funds. How do we deploy the funds? On infrastructure or on vaccines? I need to have that discussion, you know, um, help. All right. On right. uh, um, the Daily Trust newspaper, the Kagara boy story still is making headlines here. It says, why Kagara abductees remain in custody eight days after? Bandits wants six colleagues released. Employ all means to rescue victims, and that's according to IBB Abdul Salami. Gunmen kill 18 in two Kaduna local government areas, and northern governors meet in Kaduna. This one says, death toll hit 16 in Maiduguri strike. Workers, ground activities at CAC and IPC. Akiri Delu here is saying, I'll bring Obasaki back to APC. Caught Joe's mother for, of three for stealing kids. Cattle dealers begin strike today. Gunmen kill four policemen in Anambra State and Fulani not terrorists, and that's according to Sultan. Uh, we also have here COVID 19 updates, the figures and uh, uh, you know, statistics of infections, recoveries, and deaths in Nigeria. We say here, talk security is really a big one, you know, yeah. on our national newspapers today. The, the, what catches my attention immediately is the statement by Sultan Fulani, not terrorists. I, I want to agree and I want to disagree. I wish he had defined, when he said Fulani, it's like, um, I gave an example in Akwaibom, Ibibios, we have Ibibios in Akwaibom, you have Ibibios in Cross River, you have Ibibios in Rivers, you have Ibibios in Abia, you have Ibibios, you understand me? But you can say Akwaibom Ibibios, speak for your people. The Sultan is not the Sultan of, of Fulani's global. No. Tell him that the Fulanis of Nigeria are not terrorists, and I will agree with him 100%. The Fulanis of Nigeria have been known to be the most reliable, the most dependable, the most honest. That's why every Megad, you entrust your house, 
most of them, almost all are Fulanis. We entrust your house to them because these are people who are honest, who are straightforward, who are dependable. But they have been infiltrated by people who are warmongers, warlords, people who are worse than militants, people who understand all they need to understand is blood, blood, violence, raping, maiming. These people have infiltrated the good people of, 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 of the food full of, full of Nigeria to the end that Nigerians are castigating the Nigerian Fulanese. And the external aggressors are terrorizing the Nigerian well, Fulanese. They, the you time say... has come when Mr. President yeah. owes uh, the Fulanese the duty to stand up and defend them. Nigerian Fulanese. Nigerian Fulanese are good. They should well, be defended. Well, they, well, defended. I want you to add... they should be provided for. They should be protected. But Zion these talk. external aggressors have to be dealt with. Yeah, but I want you to add, you know, to this. Uh, do, do you think that, you know, they've done well enough to separate them, you know, from this stereotype? Because it, it, it's, no, it's continuing to build. They've um, not. They've not at all. And they are doing major disservice. Let me tell you something. Come 2023, a man from the South is going to come up and liberate Nigerian Fulanese and give them that protection and give them that love, that hope that the president is not giving because too many people are castigating the Fulanese. The Sultan has made a statement but because it's a sweeping statement, it's not as punchy. He would easily say, these have been, there are people who have come in and they are making problems for us. These are your brothers. They've been your gatekeepers. They've been your people. And finally, please don't tell me about this is their tradition and custom. Bring the children from the bush. You, the elites, your children are in US, they're in UK. And then you are telling, you are full of me. Then you are telling me that, that being nomadic, being in the, in the, in the forest with pythons and, 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 and cobras is their, is their tradition. Why are your people not there? Bring them out. Give them the new lease of life. Protect them. Provide for them. Nigerians will be behind the president 100%. But this external blood test people, he must tell them, you are not Nigerians, you cannot come into Nigeria, I will not allow you because you are not us. You are not us. All right, Mr. Hiertok, we're really running out of time, but there's a story I wanted us to discuss in, in, in a very short time. It's on the Daily Independent and it's on the 2023 presidency. The story here says, good luck, Jonathan, weighs options between APC and PDP. And Ade Banjo is saying he should act according to his conscience. I'll make this very short and very fast. Please write it down. Write it down today's date. The next president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is not going to come from APC or PDP. So Mr. Goodluck Jonathan, who has been accepted as a brand for this country, who has been respected by the international communities, needs to search his conscience and be careful. But I can tell you this for free. We've had enough. People are starting to wake up. You'll be amazed what will happen towards the end of this year. People are rising up, men and women of conscience. Enough is enough. We can't continue running governance as if it is a motor park kind of business. After God, the next most important institution is government. We need people that bring in cerebral thoughts. We need people that understand what government is all about. Chapter 2, Section 14, Subsection 2B of the Nigerian Constitution that say that the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. So, Mr. Goodluck, Jonathan, I will plead with you that you don't, you don't get people to deceive you and bring you to mess you up. Okay. There are people who are saying that your profile is rising too much. They want to bring you back and mess you up. Please let God guide you. The Bible says that wisdom is profitable to direct. Right, Pray Mr. about Mr. it and God will tell you to remain where you are in the place of honor and respect. All because right. the next president of Nigeria is coming neither from the PC, APC nor from the PDP. A new thinking must emerge. A new nation must emerge. All right. that, that's my right. position. Thank you very much, Mr. Ezekiel Iyaitok, for your thoughts. I guess only time will tell, you know, just what the future would hold in 20. Ezekiel the prophet. Sorry. Ezekiel the prophet. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Thank you very Thank much you very for much, joining sir. us. Thank you. Um, it, was, it was just about 800 days before we start to talk about a new president in a new election, 820 days uh, on the average. Um, and so we'll see if uh, those predictions will yeah, be... We always right have these election prophecies, so to speak. You know, <laughs> yeah. and we'll see. I don't we'll want to hear anything from Pastor this time. Ho hopefully we'll uh, be around by then, so we'll find out. <laughs>
Good morning. Stay with us when we come back. Today in history, I'm going back to 1965, and I'm talking of one of the biggest wrestling um, um, fights or bouts that we've ever witnessed in history. Yes, we'll be back. and I'll be talking about one of the highest grossing Christian movies of all time. Do stay with us.